Hi, guys. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. I saw. Ooh, hold on one second. Hi, First Hi, Jenny. Hi, Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, 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 Hi,
when you have like zones, you don't have to be redundant and draw trend lines also. However, if you drew a trend line there, that's fine also because that structure is literally the same structure that is going on through here. So we had this push down, ultimately breaking and retesting here. And now we are literally at our negative 61.8 right here. So um, looking at the DXY and all of the strength that's here, I mean, this gap down also. So this looks like it will probably push up a little bit. You see it's like some divergence falling. So right now, the dollar is gaining strength. So this divergence needs to finish diverging before we hop in anything otherwise. So that is why your breaks and resets are super important. Um, let me just stop sharing for a minute so I can say this in clarity. Okay. Everybody with me. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you. For sure. In trading. Okay. Confluences are extremely important. You do not enter anything without having multiple indications as to why you are getting in that trade, okay? Confluences are nothing but confirmations that give us the reasons as to why we are entering the positions that we are in, all right? The way to mitigate your risk are by having a set of rules, which is going in alignment with our trading plans. Trading plans are super important. But once you have that trading plan, before you enter a trade, you have to ask yourself, why am I entering this trade? Am I sitting at a zone? Do I have a break and retest? Is there a trend line that price is literally broken or a zone that price is literally broken? And now I'm looking for the retest for the continuation or am I changing trends somewhere along this trade? So Understanding why you're getting in a position before you get in it is key. There is nobody that should be entering a trade and then getting in the trade and then having anxiety like, oh my God, like, I don't know why I got in this trade. And then once the numbers are moving and fluctuating, you're freaking out because you didn't have enough data to get in that position in the first place. Everybody with me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Now back to the charts. So um, let's go back here. Okay. So I want to see how, if this is going to continue diverging before a breakdown with that divergence, of course, that means that, I mean, really GU is doing the same thing. So wait for this to finish diverging before you have anything else. Really from a larger perspective though, let's just pull up GU on I'm going to go to a more clear chart. So let's go to four hour structure right here, right? This is without all of the noise. Let's just look at it from a higher time frame perspective. Now, again, let me let me stop so that I break this down. When you guys are looking at your higher time frames, okay? When you're looking at your higher time frames, remember that it's going to take a while for that price to play out. So understanding every single time frame is important when you are trading. Is everybody with me? Yes. Mm -hmm. You are not yes. favoring. Yeah, you are sure. not favoring minor structure over major structure. You're not favoring major structure over minor structure because it is the totality of all of your structures that is literally comprising the 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 trade that you're getting into. If you say, "Oh, I'm on an uptrend," and you're on an uptrend on a four hour, you can literally go 100 to 200 pips and drawdown before that uptrend continues on the four hour. So literally. Entering off a of four hour or a one hour, again, I've said this many times before, it's like jumping out of an airplane with no exact landing, okay? Nobody is doing that. We need to scale down. So that's why we have our top down analysis because we're going time frame to time frame by time frame and boxing off price to really understand where price is going next. But again, your confirmations are key before you enter, okay? All right, so everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So if we look at this from four hour structure, let me just delete that fib real quick. All right. This was we talked about this many times before. This was getting to our TP here. We got to that TP and then price pushed back down where price pushed back down. We literally see on four hour structure. This is resistance now turned support. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So now if I go into this price for where we are, we're literally again on four hour structure at a level of support. 
on this, literally this minor structure that we have going through here, right? We're at this negative 27 from this fib structure, okay? Now, price, because we are on a four hour support level, this entire range, no different than when I talked about, when I talked about on Monday and when I talked about just in general that we are in a consolidating area, it's because the structure is so strong. Does that make sense? So we can be ranging for a while. Does that make sense? Mm. But in that range, there is still so much money to take advantage of, even literally the drops from this past week, like from here to here, that's 130 pips. Do you understand? So again, when you're looking at things from a four hour perspective, like it's, it's, it's like that's so much price. You have to scale in and really understand where you are in the market to be able to hone in and take advantage of your money. Okay. So I want to see this pull back, but, um, I mean, let's see if we can draw a trend line on this structure. We're literally and remember, when you draw these trend lines, we draw it on the majority of price. So yes, I know that this is a um, wick right here, but this is somewhat of an anomaly. Anomaly, shoot, anomaly. Because if you look at the majority of price, does everybody see where price is? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. So, um. I want to see if it's going to drop down a little bit more because, again, we're forming divergence. It could literally go to this 0% that is here. And then also we're approaching a monthly level. But until this breaks and retests here, the next level you'll be looking for is up here if we are consolidating. Does that make sense? Crystal clear. Thank you. Crystal clear? Yep. Yeah, but, yeah. but again, this is why yeah. your but again, this is why your confluences are important. Okay. Like even when we talked about the minor structure, because before any of this structure had played out, let's go back over here. Before any of this structure had played out, right? We only had a trend line that was here. That's why even when Ben talked about on Monday, I think it was Ben. Ben, you talked about how you can address your trend lines when people were asking about trend lines, right? Is Ben on his call? Yeah, that's correct. Hey, hey, Ben. Hey, Jess. Okay, so how we can adjust our trend lines? Because at that point, we only had these two points right here. Remember? And price literally, based off of structure, right? Price can push to wherever it wants to. That's why we don't get in until we have our confirmations. Because remember, what is Fibonacci? Fibonacci is a tool that's used to measure the retrace of a counter trend based on the current trend of the market. So price can pull back to whichever one of these it wants to. It's your break and retest for your overall structure that confirms the completion of the structure or the confirmation of whatever trend it is that you're in. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am, 100%. Yes. Yeah. So now that we have more of price play out, I would align this along here strictly again because the majority of price. All right. And even when you look at these, this wicked up, but then it ended up closing under here. Does that make sense? So you kind of got to sit on your hands right here just to make sure like we are where we are. So again, with that gap on the DXY, this could literally push down one more time before we have like anything else. But in totality, I want to pull back up the other mm -hmm. broker so you guys can see with none of the data on. Does he, do you see how all of this consolidation ranges all throughout here? So even when we have a push up, I'm just doing this based off support and resistance alone right here on what I'm talking about. Even when we have this next push up, do you see how this next push could literally push, uh, let's say, let's pull this on through here. Well, we kind of have two. Now, I'm not going to keep this zone on here um, because I'm only doing it to show you the bigger picture. But we have that up there. 
and then this right here. And now remember, we're on four hour structure. So both of these, even this push to right here on this structure is easily like <coughs> the 80 pips, let's see. Like right at 75 pips. Do you see that? But do you see how on the four hour, it looks like it's nothing. But when you hone in on your smaller time frames, it's so much price. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. Um, and then remember also just understanding where you are, this entire consolidation range ranges this. Does that make sense? So that's, and when I say you can trade in the midst of consolidation by understanding like where you are, this whole consolidation range is about 180 pips. Now, again, this is on a higher time frame. So let's go into minor structure and see what that means. Now, of course, we're not just entering anything willy nilly, but even when we look at past price for where we are, let's go to GU on our trading range, right? All of this price through here was trading structure, but we took trades all in the midst of these consolidating ranges. Does that make sense? You see highs and lows broken, trend lines broken and retested, but nothing was entered without our confirmations. Does that make sense? Yeah. Everybody with me? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, ma'am. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. And then, like, even when it comes to that, it's no different than your course. Okay. So, like, even catching the continuation of trends, like this structure through here. You would have entered off of this break and retest here. This would have been your entry to continue down. Like there was the break and retest of this minor structure and the break and retest of this zone. Um... Hold on, y'all. Michael's computer is like going off. Okay. Does that make sense? You have the break and retest of structure and then you have the break and retest of this trend line for the continuation of the trend. So remember in your, in your course, you have how you enter the market and we have our entries based off of our continuations and then we have our um entries based off of our reversals yes okay so there's nothing more like so when i say like i want you guys to take it step by step the reason i have you guys taking it step by step is because one you're learning like guessing is not a part of trading ever you are not guessing. You are trading what you see. Let me stop sharing so y'all can see how serious I am. You are not guessing when you are trading. You are trading what you see, okay? Not what you think. So we can think all day long, oh, I think that price is going to push 150 pips and it's gonna go to this zone. Until you have confirmation of that, you should not be guessing anything. Because again, price can be consolidated and push up 50 pips, then drop right back down to the low. Does that make sense? So we're taking it step by step, okay? Success leaves clues in life, but also in the market. Everything that you're trading is based off of past data, okay? Yes. Um, Michael went to a conference this past week actually he went to a mastermind and it was this quote that I just love so much he brought home this t-shirt and it was this quote and it said um average is the enemy success is your responsibility and change can happen in an instant I forgot the rest of it <laughs> <laughs> hold on because I wrote it down in my phone so easy Okay. Okay. So Michael went to this um, conference. Okay. So it says average is the enemy. Success is your responsibility and change can happen in an instant when you decide to flip the switch. Isn't that like so profound? It's like a whole mic drop moment. Like <laughs> it really is. No, seriously though. It was just like so beautiful to read that on that shirt. Cause I'm like, wow. Like if people just really understood the concept of that and really locking in on what it is that they say that they want. How many people on this call 
can say that what you say that you want is in alignment with what it is that you're doing currently. I can say it. You can say it? Yes. Okay, I love that. I love that. Yes, definitely. I I love that. Definitely. Keep doing it. 100%. Yes. So keep doing it because there are so many people in life that you say you want this. I know so many people, they say, oh, I want to be a millionaire. But when they wake up in the morning, they press the snooze button on their alarm. Like they they don't coincide. Your habits and your day-to-day habits are ultimately going to make you or break you. Now, if you are doing everything that you need to in order to be successful, success is inevitable right? Your daily practices, as long as they are literally structured to be successful, you're going to be successful. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That is just the journey, and the journey is going to take time. And unfortunately, there is no shortcuts to the journey. Do y'all remember, or when I told y'all, how many people remember the whole story? I'm pretty sure all of you guys do when I lost that $100,000 and your girl was depressed, okay? When I tell you I was in my freaking prayer closet, sad. I was sad, like, God, like, how? Like, what? Like, how is this happening? And not only that, I couldn't see a way out because I was scared to trade in that moment. Like, I was literally scared to place trades because I felt like the market was against me. And I felt like every time I hopped in a trade, it would go the other way until I got them out of my own way, until I set my ass still and said, okay, I'm going to master this and I'm going to get this shit and let me stop actually trading. Let me just focus on the skill set. Let me stop looking at the money and trying to make a whole bunch of wins. Let me focus on the skill set of consistency because I cannot get consistent if I'm practicing inconsistencies. That'll preach. <laughs> Ooh, that's a ball. Amen. Okay. Because I'm talking about like, I was My literally girl. just hopping in trades and I didn't, I did not have a set. Okay. I'm going to wait for this to break and recess. Or I'm going to wait until I have divergence. I, I was the girl that I could see divergence setting up. I'm like, oh, this going to buy soon. And I would get in for a buy way too early. And then my account would just be dwindling down and dwindling down and dwindling down, but I was revenge trading. Do you hear me? The skill set, I was not focused on the skill set. I was focused on getting my $100,000 back that every trade I entered, I was losing. So when I tell y'all like this journey, you cannot get around it, but once you stick to it and you focus on the skill set, the money is the byproduct of the skill set. The money is a byproduct of the success you have when you stay consistent. The money is a byproduct of mastering your psychology. The money is a byproduct of literally you saying that you want this, but then putting in the work to accomplish it. Wow. I just got goosebumps. I did too, actually. Did you? Like, I'm talking about my body just got hot. Yeah, that was a word. That no. was a word, for real. It's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> wow. We need, we I'm, about, I'm literally up in here hot. Look, it's not a joke, but it's like, I just remember the days, yo. Like, I I want this for y'all so bad. That's why I, that's why I literally try to get y'all to like I'm not the type of person that's just about to put a whole bunch of signals in a group because if you don't understand how to make adjustments if you don't understand how to master your own trades if you don't understand how to master your psychology in trades if you don't understand like how to compound your account then really all we're what we're doing is worthless and useless like I'm not going to be the girl that's like Hey, everybody, I have a big house and a Lamborghini. Sign up for my course. Like, no, like I believe that God sent me a set type of people. I don't want to appeal to everybody. I don't want everybody to be my student. I don't want the fame of this. I don't want 
to be the hype person that everybody, you know, how many people just post content and it's like, you're posting all of this trading content and you're sitting in a 500 square foot apartment and you aren't even living what it is that you're saying. Like, I actually have the lifestyle, but refuse to post the lifestyle because this is my assignment. It's not a hype train. It's the assignment. And I need y'all to get wealthy because I need y'all to break generational curses. Do you hear me? And I need y'all to change y'all family lives because especially a woman, when a woman, when a woman changed her household, I know there's some men that lead the household, okay? The man should always lead. I get that. But I feel like the woman is the backbone of a man, okay? Y'all may agree or disagree, but agree. the woman get to the kids and the kids is the future, okay? Preach. And if you can change, oh, look at the kid. Look at the kid. Hi. They are so cute. AJ, they are so cute. <laughs> But if you get to the kids and then you teach the kids that that's generational wealth, do you hear me? And there is nobody, I was talking, I don't know how many people saw that live that I did where I said that like, the reason I love to trade is not just because the money. The reason I love to trade is because I swear it does not matter. Like there is no governing body that can tell me how much I am worth. You guys, there is no governing body to tell you how much you are worth. You nobody can tell you you're worth eighty thousand dollars a year, and you can be black, and you can be white, and you can be a woman, and you can be young, or you can be old. And as long as you have your brain and some Wi-Fi and a laptop, you can make money forever. So I need y'all to tap into oh this. God. And not give up on it because there are so many people that tap into it and it get a little bit hard and then they run away. People tap into it and it's like, uh, you know, I'm not getting it. And then they run away. You will never get it if you quit. You hear me? Amen. Yes. We hear you. Quit. Yeah. And it's going to, and, and it, like, even when y'all look at, my, like, it, go back and watch. It, really, the, the testimonials that y'all need to go back and watch, go back and watch Angelica. Go back and watch that testimonial. I haven't dropped the testimonial in a long time, and I need to. And I have some. I just, I don't know. Like, I just haven't. But. Go back and watch Angelica or Chantel. Go back and watch one of them. And when you understand the power of knowledge, do you hear me? The power of knowledge, like it ain't nothing like you learning something from your for yourself that nobody can ever take away. Yes, and then once you master it, do not deviate. Don't deviate. Don't go hop in like, oh, you know, I'm in the financial markets now. Let me go test out options and then let me go test out stocks. Now, again, all right, I believe that once you really have the skill set in something, <clears throat> it, the, you know, there's this saying that the average millionaire has seven streams of income. Like, I really just don't believe that. I think that you have to master one thing first and then you could tap into other stuff. But it's like the first sign to know that somebody is really not profitable is when they have a million things going on. You know, like. Preach. I've used, I've even used this. Like there are, and, and it's no shade also. But stop trying to teach other people until you have the shit yourself. That was one thing that I stood on when people tried to get me to teach before I ever, Maria was the first student I had, but even before when she kept asking me, can you teach me, can you teach me? It took me months to teach her because even though I knew it, I wanted to be consistently profitable first. 
there are so many people that get it a little bit and it's like, oh, okay, let me go teach everybody else now. Like, yo, stick to your craft and stand on your craft and master your craft. And then if you want to help people, help people, but master your shit first. Do you understand? Now I'm going to shut up and get back to the charts because I know I just went so left. Okay. No, we needed that. Amen. We heard it. We needed to hear it. No, we needed that. Listen. Let them use you, sis. Let them use you. Okay. Okay. Let them use me. I let them use me. (laughs) That was definitely a word. Um. Cool. Yeah, I was just asking. I was just curious on how long it took you after you lost the hundred k to get back in the trade. As far as the mindset goes, like, no, it took me a while. I told y'all even up until like, um, remember I even told y'all this. I had a transparency moment with y'all where I told y'all that I would not let my account get over a hundred thousand. I would keep. I had two accounts that I would run at the same time just because. Because I had lost 100000 I couldn't mentally see my account over 100000 because I was scared that I was going to lose it. So I would literally get it to 100000 then withdraw it back down to fifty. Get it to 100000 withdraw it back down to fifty. Y'all remember that? Yeah, I remember yeah. what you said. Yeah. That. Like, oh, you with stuff like that. Like, yeah. it's so loud. Like, I, th- I think I told y'all this. Like, the end of 2021... The beginning of 2022, like just a year ago was when I got to the point where I had my account over 500,000. Because remember, it was a goal to get my account to 500,000. Yes, yes, remember. Because yes. you can never have a $100,000 day if you cannot mm-hmm. get your account over $100,000. So like mentally, I like it, it. I had the worst anxiety. And that's why I'm saying like even y'all, people who like... Yeah, I always try to be real about this because it's so real. Like the, that like, it was like a stab in my throat. It was like, I was wounded, you know? It's like, it was trauma. It was trauma. It was trauma. I think that people should have a trading therapist. (laughs) You know how people got relationship therapy? and uh like life therapy about traumas that happened to your childhood and stuff I feel like trading should have therapy now I don't want nobody to go who is not licensed and be like oh I'm gonna go be a self-proclaimed trauma trading therapist because please don't okay the market's already oversaturated but I do think there's like a real thing that it's like, you really have to get, like, it was a trauma. It's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say anything like vulgar or like very, very unfortunate situations that people, you know, go through. And then it's like, you can't get over it. It was one of those. So. Feel violated. Yes, I felt violated. Like me? Wow. I'm disciplined. And that was another thing. I had so much discipline from boxing that like when you have a disciplined person failing, ooh, that's a whole different, whole different ball game too. When you're a disciplined person and you you a grinder and you like not lazy and you like be on your shit and then you can't get some shit oh no what is happening no not me not me it make you have like a reality moment like an ego check like what you mean me the market might not must not know who i am so you know what i'm saying it's like one of those but then you really have to understand like you have to get out your own way. Okay, Malik is supposed to be doing this call. I wasn't even supposed to be doing it today. Uh, so I'm going to let Malik take over now, guys. You are perfectly fine. <laughs> I love y'all so much. Um, you, oh, wait, wait, wait. Catherine got a question. Yeah, Jeff, you, 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 yeah, Jess, you got some questions in the chat for you. Oh, I have questions right now. Yeah, somebody asked about one-on-one coaching. 
Whew. Um, <laughs> I mean, look, I miss my relationships with the one-on-ones. I'm not even gonna lie. Cause I, again, I did it for, I did it for other people, not for the money, but it's like, I really don't have the capacity right now. Like y'all know when I did one-on-ones, I graded people's homework for hours upon hours and hours and hours and hours. And it's like, if I do something, I got to put my all into it. Like eBay said, it's not needed. Like if you just follow the course, I promise you, and you do the work, consistently do the work, not tap into the work and then be like, oh my God, this is hard. Like, I don't know what she's talking about. What she mean? Five, find five trends. Like I can't find five trends. Like what the girl, what the heck is this lady talking about? Like, what does she mean this? What does she mean that? I don't know if I'm doing it right. Oh my God. Like, you know, when you get out of that, and then just literally just keep doing it and keep doing it, keep doing it. Trading, it's like the consistency I know is like driving a wrench in your mind. You'll go to sleep seeing lines on your chart forever and ever and ever. But once you get to that point, then you start to see it. And then you be like, oh shit, I see it. Dang, okay. All right, she must not, she might not, she might know what she's talking about a little bit. And then you keep doing it and you be like, damn, all right, that trade played out. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Rebecca said automated students definitely are successful. Yes, they are. They are. As long as you put in the work though. Um yeah, it's even honestly, it's even hard for me to just I it's not it's not hard. Let me change my words. It has been a challenging process for me to balance everything accordingly because I am a perfectionist and I like to put my all into everything. And it causes me to be spread thin at times and I need to learn to balance everything. I also want to give a shout out to all the moms there. Now, men, I'm not forgetting you, okay? But I do have to shout out the moms because I had this revelation the other day. Almost every successful woman that I know that is a multimillionaire, and I know a lot, they don't have, they no, don't have no kids. And the ones who have, have kids that are, that are right up in my right 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 The ones that do have kids that are literally in their 20s. I don't know nobody that has both. Shit's hard. Shit is hard. Okay. Um, all right, Catherine, I'll answer your question, and then I'm gonna let have let Malik have the floor. Oh, okay. I was just wondering about uh, Monday night because I had to work again. I missed the class. Do you think Monday night call will get posted this week? Yeah, it's going to get posted right now. I'm going to do it while right, you're here. That's all I had. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for reminding me. Because I promise you, once I get off that call, I'm literally on to the next thing. All right, Malik, you can go ahead and share your screen. I'm gonna make hey, how's everybody doing? Can y'all hear me okay? Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah, we can hear you. How y'all been? How y'all been? Good, 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 good. 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 good to see you. Good to see y'all too. So, um, tonight's uh analysis on gold is gonna be fairly quick. Um, it's a very simple setup, right? So, what I want to make known to y'all is, um, let me go to my thirty minute right quick. So, just a little bit. Okay. So, about two weeks ago, right, we were over here and gold was selling off like crazy, right? We started diverging. And as we know, whenever we get divergence, we're looking for a break a retest and then followed by our entry. So being that gold was oversold, um, yes, we were looking for buys and we clearly got that on a small time frame from here to here. Um, I believe this was, let me see. Yeah, this was about a 0.7 retrace. We got hit at our negative 618 for our minor structure move. And then our main structure move was from point A to point B. And then we had a 50% retrace, right? 
Um, took those buys, great moves, uh, simple setups, right? Uh, hit our negative 27, smashed through that with momentum up into our negative 618. Once we got up here, we had um, consolidation and divergence forming right through here. We had our main trend line and this trend line, this green one is what the one I'm referring to. Um, let me go to my right time frame one hour so you can see that. So that's where this uh, trend line is coming from. So we have three touches all the way to our current one, right? So our 618 is hit, our main trend line is hit, so on and so forth. And then we had a break and retest for a minor structure move right here, which is where we should have caught our first sell. And then smashed all the way down to our negative 618. Cool. Um, so the thing about this whole structure right here is this is nothing but the main push, right? So I mentioned that this was the minor structure move. Overall, guys, I have a sell um, this week. And as you guys can see, the main move is from here to here. And you can see that we had hit our uh, 0.38, right? So we know that we're looking for a um, aggressive yeah. push down to our negative 27. Is everybody following me? Definitely. Yeah. OK, yeah. good. So yeah. um, if you guys, this was a beautiful setup for several reasons. One, um, if you had seen and been paying attention to this overall move, you could have possibly swung this trade um, and just ride this thing all the way down to this purple zone. I'll show showcase my purple zone later, zoomed out. Um, second entry was a break and retest of this minor zone here. You guys see that? How it's been supported over here to our left, and then we caught it right here? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so now price had finished so far with the main push, so it seems, and then we had a, a pullback to our 0.38. Now, what I'll say is I don't necessarily believe we're going to get our um, completion of this trade tonight and maybe not even tomorrow. We do have news come Wednesday. As you guys can see, uh, CPI, unemployed, uh, no, unemployment, that's odd. So, yeah, CPI, and then we have uh, retail sales, unemployment claims on Thursday, and then Friday, I believe, we have... Uh, consumer sentiment. Um, so I'm expecting a lot of volatility from Wednesday, uh, so on and so forth. Now, as far as what's happening right now, we can see that there's clearly minor divergence. You guys seeing that here and here? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. So what that's telling me is basically um, we're looking for either a retest of this trend line here. So we need to see what price is going to do here. Um, followed by the back of the zone and price could even come back up um, to our overall downtrend line right here as well. So those are kind of the things that I would say be cautious for. Like, don't just hop on this, hop in on this just because um, I'm see like we're seeing an overall sell. You know what I'm saying? You want to enter in um, an area that makes sense the most. So see what it does when price gets up here to around this little trend line here. If it blows past it, your next point that you're going to want to watch is right here around the zone. We've seen that it's been support, resistance, support again. So that's kind of um, that's kind of what I want you guys to see step by step. And I like to kind of give you guys multiple scenarios because um, just so in case if if something happens that we necessarily let me hold on, let me get myself together. I like to give you guys multiple scenarios just in case you're, so you're not surprised by whatever happens. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Okay. Appreciate you. No problem. Yeah, no problem. thank you. No problem. So that's kind of what I'm seeing. And um, if you guys get rejection around this trend line or zones, obviously take the sales. Um, we could get a trend line bounce here. You know what I'm saying? You obviously know that you're looking for wicks, um, engulfing candles, and um, yeah, like I said, rejection pretty much um, to carry these trades down. And um, yeah, 179 pips. I mean, that's more than enough. So do you guys have any questions about anything that I've said? Yeah, I have a question, Malik. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, so you mentioned, obviously, uh, probably some of the biggest news for the week coming out starting Wednesday, right? Uh, obviously, the CPI data coming out then. Uh, and we know that a lot of the times you can have like a retest of a trend line, but it might retest it a second or even third time. Uh, so when you know that it's later on in the week that you're going to get the biggest news that's going to cause some volatility, and let's say on that Sunday night or that Monday, you see an initial 
test or initial uh, confluence that you are waiting for, do you jump in then? Would you typically jump in then? Or are you going to sort of hold off and wait for the, the big news drop uh, and then jump in? Nah, so if, um, if price comes to where I need to see, if price comes to my point of interest, um, I'm taking that trade regardless of what news is, um, regardless of what's going on with news, primarily because I'm confident in my analysis. So that kind of thing comes with um, just trial and error, building your confidence and knowing that um, news is likely going to push or should push, if you're correct, um, price into your analysis for the week. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, so, I mean, that's just repetition. Don't don't allow news to make you want to sit out or be fearful of it or nothing like that. Unless something unpredictable like COVID, you know what I'm saying? Then, obviously, we got a problem. But um, back test, back test, back test. Even what I recommend is, like, look, um, go to Forex Factory sometimes just on the weekends and um, look to see the news that had dropped that week and then go see what the markets did during that time period you know what i'm saying oftentimes you'll see okay um it pushed in my it pushed in my direction or it spiked up a little bit but it's still you know what i'm saying overall gave me what i needed to so as long as you're not over leveraging and risking blowing your account you should be fine got it thank you yes sir does anybody else have any questions oh i love you guys so much Okay, well, if that's all y'all got. Hey, um, sorry, I was trying to unmute. One question, Malik. Go ahead, go ahead. So I have, um, I have that blue trend line, but I also have another trend line connecting the two lowest wicks. Talking about like down here? Mm -hmm. So the, so connecting that, yeah, go oh, left. Right. A little bit more to the left. Yeah, so the, yep, so the start of where you have the blue line and then that second wick. Now, oh would God. it be smarter to wait until that trend line breaks and retest for the sell or if you see what you need to see at the blue trend line you're going to enter for the for the sell um honestly if i see what i need to see up here I'm, i would enter for the sell because if price is coming down here i mean yes it's been support but you want to enter in as high as possible you know it's kind of like um basics of trading buy low sell high Does that makes okay. sense yeah so yeah, look around these trend lines, look around up here, look around these zones, just watch this area. Now, if the last scenario I'm going to give you guys, like, let's just say for whatever reason, price breaks all of this and we start coming up. I don't see price going no higher than 1935. And that's simply because of what we've been taught by just right? The breaks and the retest. So we have our test of support over here. We have the clean break here. And if price does come back up here, this will be your guys' golden entry. And I mean, sell it. So that's all that I got for y'all. I hope I was very helpful. Thank yes. you. Yeah, appreciate no problem, it. No problem. You guys have a good week. Um, you. See you guys next week. You too. Uh, you too. All right, thank, thank you. 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 Thank